Is the $2,000 Mac Studio really worth over double the price compared to the M1 MacBook Air? Well, today I will give you guys my honest feedback after two weeks of use with the system. Depending on what you do, we're gonna go over a bunch of real world tasks and I think some of you guys are really going to be surprised. I know I was. So let's go ahead and jump in. Here are the specifications comparing both of these systems. We have 900 bucks compared to 2000. So there is a big difference in performance. Now we do have to cover another difference. And that is the fact that this thing does have 32 gigs of RAM as well as having larger SSD. Now, if we go ahead and kick up that SSD, we add 10 gigabit ethernet, which was available after I purchased my M1 Mac mini. The difference is much smaller. We have 1200 bucks, but keep in mind, if you were able to get 32 gigs of RAM on the M1 Mac mini, then the price difference would be only 400. And with the studio, we have four Thunderbolt uh, ports on the back and then on the front we have two additional USB type C's that are 10 gigabit per second Which is nice and that SD card reader So for the extra 400 bucks you get extra ports as well and the ability to use up to five Displays instead of being limited to two now I know most people do not need more than two displays But I will say in the real world having those extra ports and that SD card reader in the front has been very nice where as with the M1 Mac Mini, I have had to resort to buying a third party Thunderbolt dock, which gives me extra ports because this is a little bit limited. Once you start hooking up your display, one fast SSD, you have almost no ports left over. Now, one of you guys know up front that that RAM difference does make a difference. I wish that we could get 32 gigs with this system. Now, for most people doing basic tasks, you are not gonna notice much difference. So we take a look at the single core Geekbench test here, uh, or if we take a look at speedometer 2.0 as far as the snappiness of the system, they're actually really close. And if you're using regular tasks, you don't need more than 16 gigs. But if you're somebody that does want to get into some video editing, photo editing, some other kind of productivity, if you have start opening up multiple applications or working on longer tests, that is where 16 gigs can be a limitation for you. Now, I've gotten around this by keeping just one app open and then it's not too bad, but you only you will know, you know, how many tabs you keep open, how many programs you want to open at the same time. This is where the 32 gigs really comes in and at the base $2,000 price, that is included. Now, as far as multi-core performance, we have double the CPU core the score doesn't quite double, but it is quite close there. So that is a good thing. And then as far as Cinebench, which maxes out the CPUs, you guys also see a really nice linear scaling or close to it. Now with this extra performance, do you get more noise? You know, not really. <laughs> this thing is tiny. You guys can see it's kind of a joke, you know, how small it looks now compared to the studio, which looks quite chunky. Uh, but the cooler that's in here, it literally stays on idle fans the whole time. It is silent no matter what you throw at it. But the same thing goes for the Mac Studio. They put in a much bigger fan in this thing. Uh, two fans actually much bigger cooler. So both of these systems are completely silent. Now another difference is the speed of the SSDs. Even if you get the top spec two terabyte model the M1 Mac mini, it is still limited to just under 3000 megabytes per second. Whereas the Mac Studio, even in its base 512 form, it is close to twice as fast. And then of course it goes up to eight terabytes. But as far as graphics, you actually get three times the graphics cores and you get almost perfect scaling in Geekbench's metal test, which runs about 20 to 30 different tasks. So that is pretty impressive, great scaling. And then as far as gaming performance, you could actually get close to three times the scaling if the application is very well optimized, uh, or if it's more CPU limited, it's about twice the performance. So that is actually decent uh, if you can consider all the other differences that you get. With the M1 Ultra, we are not seeing scaling anywhere near this good. So the base $2,000 Mac Studio is actually a pretty good value. Now let's jump into real world productivity tasks. As far as Xcode for coding, you would think you'd get double the scaling, but that's not true. We do have a decent bump, but I would say unless you're compiling a ton of different stuff, 
often, uh, I would not spend the extra money. Because of the unified memory and the efficiency, the M1 Mac Mini is already super, super quick. Jumping into Logic, in our new Logic Pro benchmark, you guys can look it up exactly what the test is. Uh, we're getting close to double the tracks, but once again, the Mac Mini is a killer. The only thing I would say to you guys is, if you're using a ton of plugins, you might be limited by the 16 gigs with the M1 Mac Mini. That is where the studio comes in with its 32 gigs. Now, as far as the photo editors, we do see a pretty good difference in a lot of applications, but not all. In Affinity, we have a good jump in CPU, but a pretty big one in GPU, and the GPU is what's used most often in Lightroom. As far as the exports, the speeds are almost twice as fast, really good scaling, uh, and that means that if you do a lot of exports, Sports. If you're a wedding photographer, you do big batches of photos, man, I definitely noticed the difference. And the same thing if you're doing uh, panoramas or if you do HDR, if you're just doing tasks that you're sitting there waiting, man, this is where this thing really surprised me and I would absolutely go for it. Now, as far as sliders and doing your standard adjustment of brushes, I do notice a difference, but it's not as big just because the single core performance is so close. And then as far as Photoshop, Unfortunately, we are not getting anywhere near as good scaling as Lightroom. It is still not very efficient, not very well optimized. So for Photoshop users, as long as you're not doing a ton of layers that require the extra RAM, I would stick with the Mini. For those of you guys that are doing 3D work, for example, we tested out Blender, we do see some nice scaling and performance. So if you're somebody that's doing constant renders or you're working with some animations, the extra graphics performance is really useful. I would definitely push all of you guys to spend the extra money for a studio. Now, for video editors, it really depends. We tested out Final Cut, but DaVinci Resolve actually performs almost identically. So uh, for those of you guys working with both programs, here are the results. For your standard H.264 projects, uh, the exporting speed, well, you do see a difference, um, but it just depends on how often you export. Same thing for H.265. Uh, what really matters is your timeline performance. Now, a lot of you guys, a lot of YouTubers out there are doing simple stuff, even having some titles, you know, a couple different effects, some color cor corrections, you don't see a massive difference in timeline performance. That's because if you're not maxing out the M1's GPU, um, you won't really see a difference. This one, this one will just be used at like half the performance or maybe about a third. Uh, but once you start loading up a lot of different effects, you start going into some tougher projects, that's where you start seeing a difference. Now, for these export times, so I'm using five minute projects because especially with the tougher ones, uh, they take quite a while and we sit here spending hours and hours doing these tests. But because neither of these thermal throttle, you could scale this five minute project that I test to 10 minutes or 20 minutes and see if that export time makes a difference for you. Once we start getting into the tougher projects, especially getting into ProRes, we start seeing some massive differences because the Mac Studio has ProRes in decoders and encoders, which really speeds it up. So if you're working with ProRes, absolutely Mac Studio. And the same thing goes if you're working with tougher projects, raw footage, uh, or you're stacking a lot of effects. This is definitely when you need the extra GPU performance. So overall, if you're working with regular 4K compressed footage and you're doing just a few effects, some titles, things like that, it's not a necessity. But once you start getting into different multicams with different effects, stacked up, any sort of raw, you definitely want the studio. So I have to say overall, I was really surprised by most of these projects and how much of a difference this makes. Now, of course, if you're looking at the base model for $699, that's all you can afford, this is gonna be an insanely good system. But once you start upgrading, you start adding more storage, uh, you start caring about the ports, this is where the Mac Studio really comes into its own. And I think for a lot of you guys, if you keep your system, for three years, four years, five years, I would definitely spend the extra money now. And now if you can't, I would also say if there's any way you can wait for about a half a year and wait for the M2 Mac Mini uh, with the new processor, I would do so because it's gonna get a lot of extra benefits. Um, it will be
be worth the wait. But overall, it's still a decent system. Just right now, it is starting to show its age a little bit and also some of the extra limitations. But you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. Check out one of those excellent videos right over there. This is Max, and I will see you in the next video.